Achtung, Achtung, welcome to We Have Ways of Making You Talk, Christmas editions with uh, James Holland and myself, Al Murray, and Jim. You know, one of the things I love about the Christmas series is sitting down and watching a traditional Christmas movie. Yeah. Like like Zulu. And yeah. the... <laughs> because... Um... Da-na, 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 da-na. Exactly. Um, uh... And the reason, like, because I'm busting to talk about this, and obviously um, I'm using Christmas as the excuse, because I was, I was in Rourke's Drift last week. Yeah. And you know what? You know what? I, I think that's fine. I think occasionally we talked to Ronan White about the Falklands. Yeah. Um, we talked about Harriers, didn't we? We, we, yeah. we, we occasionally veer off, and we, 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 we're, we're going to a First World War trench, aren't we, in the new year? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think yeah. that's okay. And, you know, it's our podcast, and do you know what? We can do what the hell we like. Well, that's true. And and also, the other thing is, is um, you know, we talk about walking the ground. I had an opportunity to walk some ground, so yes. I walked the ground. You walked the and ground. The inter- and also, I would, I would argue, I would suspect that a lot of people who listen to this are familiar <laughs> with the movie. <laughs> Just a well, stab in the dark, but I reckon. It's a, possi- it's a possibility, isn't it? It's every chance. And maybe, maybe if they maybe. haven't watched it. Yeah. This is the opportunity. Um, and there's a little bit of a link yeah. because there's Danny Baker and, of course, he's in our favourite yeah. film, Cruel Sea. Yeah, and Jack Hawkins. And Jack Hawkins. Yeah. And Jack Hawkins. And there they are in Zulu. Yeah. Well, and, Mike, and Michael Caine um, uh, from, uh, you know, who... Battle of Britain. Uh, uh, bridge Too well, Far. Well, A Bridge Too Far. Um, the Eagles, Eagles landed. landed. So, you know, we're, 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 we're on... I think we're on firm territory here. <laughs> and and, and the, the, other thing about, the other thing about this is, I, you know, I walked the ground. Didn't take very long. And the reason it didn't take very long to walk the ground is because this is a tiny battlefield. It's it's two buildings, a cattle kraal. That's it. It's the most it's the most extraordinarily small battlefield. And of course, I mean, you know, many of our listeners would have we, we've and we've talked about this before. You know, the tennis courts at Kahima. Yeah. You know, that's a, I suppose that's the the, the closest thing, yeah. except in terms of how much of this was fought at extreme close quarters. Um, but, you know, the, the, you, we, we, so we, we, drove, we drove up there for this programme I'm making about um, the, the British Empire, and, and we're going to South Africa. We have to address the, the, the business of Rourke's Drift, of Zulu, of Sandawala, yep. the fact that, you know, Lord Chelmsford's, uh, the, you know, Lord Carnarvon have decided they're going to have a war with the Zulus. And the Zulu, you know, they issue the Zulus an ultimatum to disarm, which, of course, is impossible for the Zulus to agree to, yep. all this sort of stuff. I mean, abs- to be honest, diabolical, perfidious Alban- Albion stuff of the of the, of the the very worst kind. Yeah, you and, can't get around it, can you? There's, there's no way no, around it. No, there's, no, there's absolutely no way around it. Although although the, what's interesting is the sort of complexity of, of what Rourke's Drift, how Rourke's Drift, the battle at Rourke's Drift, changes the political picture in a very strange way. But yeah. um, So we drive up there and... The fixer on the program. We were in Johannesburg, filming Johannesburg, and we'd done we'd done more contemporary stuff, and we'd done some uh, some Boer War stuff as well. So we went to a a blockhouse with Simon Green, a historian, South Africa. Well, he's a British historian, lives in South Africa now. Right. Who said you know? Who said you know Peter Cadig Adams? Don't you? I'm like, oh <laughs> God! Is there no escape? <laughs> and uh, uh, and he's a former British soldier who used to do. He used to go to South Africa when after apartheid ended. They used to do this thing called these. The British Army used to do fair dealing between the different armed groups when right. they were doing truth and reconciliation to get to people to disarm, which is interesting because you know given given Britain Britain's track record in South Africa that they would that they would get the British Army to do that or trust them to do that is I think quite revealing. You know that things that things had may, had maybe moved on. You know it wasn't all our fault anymore and all that. Anyway, we. We drive up there and the fixer said it'll be oh, it's a three hour drive. It took us five hours. It was interminable to get to, to get to Rock's Drift. Well, just because it's a really, really long way. Yeah, South okay. Africa is enormous. It's huge, isn't it? Um the ra- the railway line from Cape Town to Joburg, which they had to protect with blockhouses, all the way from Cape Town to Joburg during the during the Boer War. Yeah. Where they would put these little these little blockhouses made of mealy 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 bags and food tins filled up with dirt. Right? It's 1,200 miles, right? Yeah, they defended a railway line, 1,200 miles. It's absolutely extraordinary, right? Which is why the British need a quarter of a million soldiers and all that 
to deal with 45,000 burrs. Anyway, that, we're not here to talk about a burr walk. So we drive down. I'm looking at Google Maps because the driver keeps going, yeah, about another 40 minutes. And you think, you've, you've said that four times now. And we're, we're no closer. And the, the 4G is better in the veldt in the middle of nowhere South Africa than it is in central London. I'd just like to point that out. You get a better 4G signal at Rorkstrift than you do at... You, you're on Oxford yep. Street. Anyway. Yep. Ditto Seawer Oasis, by the way. Just saying Exactly. It. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So you, come, so you come off the dual carriageway and then we go through a place called Dundee. And then, you, then there was a, there's a right turn or the walkie-talkie suddenly. They're right turn here. And you come off and you're on like a, you're on a dirt road. And, what's it, and is it completely empty? Are the townships and villages and what? There are, what? Little, t- there are little villages and little, there's occasional townships and villages. But, you know, they're not, they're not like English villages five miles apart. They're... You know, they're 15, 20 miles apart. It's incredibly beautiful. I mean, they'd had a lot of unseasonal rain, so it's greener than you might um, have the picture in your head. Uh, uh, I mean, in fact, round, round, the, round the, the, uh, the Buffalo River and round, round Rock's Drift, it, you know, if you, could, you could close your eyes and be in Wales. I mean, which is, which is, which is quite interesting, you know, given, yeah. given the, the associations that follow. Anyway, so we're, we're driving along this dirt road for ages, and then suddenly, and, you, and it's a sort of scatter of buildings um, uh, going up the slope. You go over the Buffalo River, so into Natal, as was, and you come up, and you get, and, and it's it, you, you come up, and there's a sort of sharp incline up, and there's the hospital, and there's the store building that were the two uh, buildings at Kwa Jim, Kwa Jimu, Jim's Land was the name of the station, if you're a Zulu. <clears throat> um, Sat there on on because it was James Rourke who was the former trader who lived there. Sat there on this and, and it's oh, what's, it, what's a drift? I know what a, I mean. I know what snow drift is, but what's a drift? Well, I think I think it means um, I think it means a sort of uh, a, a plane, right? Um, so so you've two <clears throat> hills either side of it, right? There's the eyebrow hill because the Zulus call it the Battle of the Eyebrow, okay. uh, Eyebrow Hill, so, and it really is like a it really is the shape of an eyebrow of the hill. Then there's another hill the other side, and you drive you drive round it with it on your left, up up from the up from the Buffalo River, and the, the the issue with the the issue with the Eyebrow Hill is it's a thousand meters from the river, so what you really don't want is Zulus on the hill with uh, uh, with the you know uh, rifles, which of course people have got hold of, but the Zulus got hold of by this point, sniping at the river. So that so it's a it's a sensible place, you know. I mean, in the field they go, why why us, sir? Well, because we're here, lad, right? But they're, <laughs> they're there for they're there for a good enough reason, you know. You're you're keeping an eye on the river, you know. And Chard had been sent down to rebuild the pontoon and all that sort of stuff. While while yeah. um, while uh, you know, uh, his field company is left in Saddlewell and, and and destroyed. Um, but anyway, you're you're you're, it, it's interesting. So you drive around and there's a, there's a sort of hillock up from the road and that's where the that's where the two buildings are and right. they're separated they're separated by a space about the size of two tennis courts cattle kraal at the back next to the store built storage building yeah and the museum the rock's drift museum is in the um is in the hospital yes yeah, so i'm just looking at it all on google earth all right oh great okay well well let, let me let me jump on google earth as well because i um, can see uh, the hills the eyebrow yeah. hill so i'm trying to work out which yeah. one's the eyebrow hill and which one isn't Yes, so so as you can see, if you zoom out, there's the hill. There's the hill if to the you, right if of it, to the to the east of it, to the to the right of it. Yeah, and then the hill. There's a sort of hill to the left of it, a bit lower down, so to speak, on the vertical, right, as it were. So, so, so right, sort that, of um, southwest. Yeah, that hill's kind of further back. So you cut as you can see, you come over the Buffalo River. Yeah. Right. On the road, then you turn left. Yeah. And then you drive up to the you drive up to where the museum is. Yeah. And. As you can see, that so the museum is what the museum is where the um, <coughs> and this is interesting because Google Earth it's 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 more bleached out than you'd think. Yeah. But it, uh, the battle takes place. <clears throat> you see where the museum is. Yeah. And then there's that small building right uh, to its right. Ignore that building. Then the building above that's a, that's a sort of cross shape. Yeah. That's it. That's the cattle kraal there. The, the the stone walls of the cattle kraal to the left of the second the. the the northern building, right? No, the and Osterberg the battle, Parish. Yeah, yeah. The battle, basically, the battle takes place around that. And 
if you look if you look um to the east of where the museum is and past that second little building that white thing is the memorial in the in that Got little, you. yeah um, yeah that little rectangle that little rectangle is the british memorial so the first attack comes in kind of from that direction and you see if you look a little further south a little further south from the memorial the white thing there's a there's a sort of there's a semi not not quite a semicircle shape with a circle in front of it yeah i can see that that's the last, that's, that's the 12 isn't it that yes that's the zulu memorial so that that's the, the, the uh, and it's in the shape of a cattle kraal that the um the 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 the, the eye that sort of that sort of half semicircle that sort of crescent moon and then in front of it is a pile of a sculpture of a pile of shields with a leopard sitting on it and the leopard, leopard gazing out and all this right the first attack comes that way comes from there towards where the where the british have put up a put up their wagons and put their mealy boxes out and all this sort of stuff yeah right and so they engage the zulus so so they're being watched from the hill obviously cuz the hill the hill overlooks but they're being so engaged, that's the hill engaged. the hill directly to the east yeah 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 <clears throat> Yeah, because because Il Sandawana, which you now want to you want to put in, you want to see where Il, Sand- Il Sandawana is. is. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I I never mastered any of the pr- pronunciations. Okay, yeah, uh, it's, it's not very far away, is it? It's not very far away. In fact, and I'm so going what to do you've a measurement. So what you've got is the is the um the, they're the reserve. Um, uh, the, the the people that attack Rock's Drift are the reserve, and. They want to get stuck in, and they it's about want two to... and a half miles away, isn't Warner? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But but twelve thousand meters it is as a yeah, crow flies. As a crow, as a crow flies. Yeah, but it's a bit more. It's a bit trickier than that. But but basically, they they're the reserve. They didn't fight in the encounter in the morning, right? And they want to get they want to get stuck in. It's what it, uh, it's and this what is it the twenty com- second of January eighteen seventy nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and it's what it comes down to is they want to get stuck in, but the king Chetsweo has forbidden it. Because Rock's Drift, the settlement, is the other side of the Buffalo River and in Natal. And while the British, while while the British are in Zululand, so the other their side of the Buffalo River, which is where Isanawana is, they're fair game. They can attack them. It's no problem. But Chetsweo wants to, uh, and I, it, it, it's his is a, you sort of the you sort of have to pop or something. I can never figured it out when we were there. He forbids any crossing into Natal because then he'll lose the moral high, gl- high ground in this inc- in this encounter with the British. One of the things we were told by the... There's a Zulu guide whose grandfather had, had fought there, but he never got to speak to his grandfather. His grandfather's too old because he's from the great big extended family because they practice polygamy. He said, what you have here is a y- load of young warriors who want to get into battle and they want to get into battle because that way they can get married. And... Your markings on your shield tell you which regiment you're in and your seniority within the Zulu armies. And this is basically, essentially, um, uh, I think it's one of the king's brothers. And he, what he wants to do, he wants a victory. The enemy are there for the taking and his soldiers are completely up for it. And he disobeys orders. And so this old Zulu guide said to us, there are two lessons. There are two lessons to take from this day of battle. He said, the first lesson is, if your enemy it, it makes a mistake, make the most of it, you know, sort of thing, which is which is leaving the not lagering the camp at this under one because because Chelmsford thinks not to not to lager properly. He doesn't it doesn't defend his camp properly because he because he can't be bothered because it's still too big and too difficult. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. They just cut right? corners. He cuts corners and he takes a column off because he thinks he knows where the Zulus are. And he's wrong. And the Zulus are capable of covering 50 miles a day on foot and then fighting a battle and then basically going home. And they're able to do this because they have no logistic tail. They're pure, they may have cattle with them that they take with them and then kill and eat and, and, and you have, as a, a rolling train. But what they don't have is any... They don't have wagons with gunpowder on. They don't have oxen. They don't have, they don't have any of these things. The, the, the Zulu warrior, he carries some food on him in a, in a pouch, like made of, a, I think made of a kind of maize, like a biscuit, which apparently is fine when you first cook it and it's nice with butter on for breakfast and all that. But right. if you've had it in your pouch for three or four <clears> days in a little leather pouch, it's pretty disgusting. So what happens is this this reserve goes and attacks Rourke's Drift. The, the essential advantage the British have is if they form a proper defensive position, and, you know, they've a, they've a sapper officer with them who's, who's 
Chard, who, who, yep. who's, who's senior by five minutes, or whatever. Yeah. And they're putting loopholes into the buildings, and they're putting the they're putting again. It's uh, the the mealy tins and the sacks and and uh, you know the stuff and their supplies and the wagons. They they build a proper stockade. And the thing is, is the Afrikaners had had defeated um, uh, the Sosa, I think, in a battle in a similar, you know, in a wagon, basically in a wagon circle. That's a legendary battle in Boer culture, in Afri Afrikaans culture. So you could do it. It was doable. We need to take a quick break right now. We'll be back in a second. Cheerio. Welcome back to We Have Ways of Making You Talk. Jim and I are in the heart of Zululand. The Martini rifle, which is which is a point four oh seven round, I think. So it's a big bloody round, and it's designed to shoot you. You don't designed to cut a man down at a thousand yards, right? So, whereas the Zulu histoire, the the, the dagger, the blade thing, yeah. is the length of your forearm, and then has a blade on it. And it's called, it's called, the, it's, and I'm, again, I'm getting this wrong, the proper pronunciation, because it's meant to do the sound of the weapon being pulled from a man's guts. The, wah, it's supposed to be the sound of the, the you know, the, the weapon coming back wow. out of, the, of your enemy. And the idea is you get in under the ribs and you turn it, yeah. pop the ribs open and then have a good rummage and, and that's how you kill your enemy. Wow. That thing, they've got throwing spears, but that thing's no good unless you're actually on top of the bloke you're trying to kill, right? Yep. And the the British also have a triangular, great big long, you know, 18-inch long triangular bayonet on their rifle. So this effectively got a six-foot spear. Yes. So so it's very, very, you know, the, the Zulus have to close with, with the British. They have to close with the enemy to defeat them. And they can't. It's, the, it's basically what it comes down to. Got it. And and so the first attack comes in from the direction of that war memorial, yes. basically. And straight, that's the body in of, there. Yeah, that's the body. Uh, uh, and then they send another one round on their left flank, the horns of the buffalo round on the left flank. Um, so they swing. So they send in a second attack there. And there's 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 this one of the Zulu officers who on that part of that attack, and there was a little fence there um, and a gateway. He he was seen to lead seven or six or six attacks rather he was seen to lead six attacks himself personally with his men with his men being cut down over and over and over again and and was regarded by the british officers there as the bravest man they saw that day this this zulu officer so you've got this you know this this epic struggle but it, it is absolutely tiny and i uh, uh, at the bottom of the bottom right hand side of the hospital there is is the door private hook who wasn't a drunk and wasn't a, you know, a a reprobate and all that sort of stuff that that's that's the movie hook was in that door and the door was barricaded and what he'd do is he'd fire his rifle you didn't have to aim at anybody obviously and at that range a point four round is basically going to take your arm or leg off or cut you in half right so he'd fire around and then he'd have a couple of jabs with his bayonet and then he'd reload fire jab 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 reload and he said what happened was while he was doing that the zulus tried to grab his rifle and pull it out of his hands and obviously the barrels you know burning hot and he said in his account he says i had a better grip of it than they or something like that like really like absolute badass but then what happens is they have to they have to they fight to retreat through the hospital and the men are tearing holes in the walls with their bare and hands. And the hospital is the museum today, isn't it? Yes, it's the museum today. And so inside the museum, you've got these sort of figures and dioramas and stuff. And there's, there's a storeroom, of, the store, because there's two buildings, aren't there? There's a, the, there's a hospital <coughs> and there's a store. Yeah, storeroom, yeah. So there's, is on the on yeah. Google Earth, is the storeroom the one that is sort of slightly southwest of yeah. the museum? Yes, I think so, yeah. The rectangular yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you can see where everyone's been walking around. But yes. it, 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 you, you, what you can't see on Google Earth here is that they mark, they've marked out with stones where the defensive lines were. And so when you're on the battlefield... Yeah, you sort of almost can, can't you? You almost can, but you can't quite. It's not The resolution isn't quite that good. The museum is fantastic. So they've got, you know, they've got dioramas and all this sort of stuff. And they've got, they've got someone crawling through one of the holes in the, in the wall. And, you know, one of the men tore all the skin off his hands and was invalided out of the army, army because he was burrowing through the brick walls. Oh, God. Through the, through the partition walls to get out. 
and then they punch a hole in the top of the in the awning uh, 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 um, on the northern end of the hospital, and then feed the wounded out that out that way. And it's it's um, Hitch, I think, who's carrying people. He's been shot through the shoulder in the movie. He's shot in the leg, but he's been shot through the shoulder, and he's carrying men across the um, the, the, the sort of that open space back to the redoubt um, uh, with with a with a shot through shoulder. It's just. It's, it's absolutely, I mean, it's absolutely staggering. The, the, uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the store is where that, the, the building that looks like a church on Google Earth is. That's where that's Oh, okay. Was. Yeah, got it, got it. Okay, yeah. so I've been looking at it. The so it's basically, way. it's basically the rectangle that surrounds those two buildings. The, the, the little third one there was yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. So yeah. the store is the church. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, I mean, if it, 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 you know, there's nothing to, there is, there really is nothing, nothing to it. Um, yeah. You can walk it, across it, that in no time, can't you? Yeah, you know, we walk round it in five <laughs> minutes maximum. Yeah. Um, uh, but yes, hit, Hitch is shot through the shoulder and carrying men across the, across that, um, you know, as they're handed down by hook. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's absolutely the whole thing's unbelievable. The drama that must have happened there. Yeah. And then what happens in the, so then what happens in the morning, right? So they fight, they, they fight into the darkness because it starts at 4.30 in the afternoon, right? On the 22nd. So yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, the morning you've had the disaster of the Sandawala and then, and then, um, and then this battle starts at half four in the afternoon then goes into the night. And in the morning, what Chelmsford done is he's, is he's forced march a column up to relieve Rourke's Drift, Right. So they arrive in the morning as the Zulus are thinking about whether they should attack again, right? And they see all these redcoats coming and they think, you know what? Maybe not. And apparently the two armies, you know, in Dun uh, uh, at Dunkirk, there's that bit where the British driving through over the, is it the River Ah, or whatever it's yeah. called? Yeah. No, the River Ah. Ah. The River Ah, where they're just driving past each other. Can I go, see you later, mate? The Tommies are going past yeah. the Germans. Yeah. Basically, that happens. The Zulu army sits there and, and they can see each other. They're that close as the Redcoats come up and, and, and relieve Rourke's Drift. And they're, 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 you know, looking at each other across the road as, the, as they arrive. And the, the Zulus call it off. And the Zulus partly call it off because there's just too many Brits now, uh, British soldiers on the scene. And also because the attack wasn't sanctioned by the king. It's an incredible place. And it, uh, and and Doug Rattray, who showed us round, sort of the legendary da uh, D David Rattray. David Rattray, that's it, yeah. David yeah um, um, uh, he showed us round and has all the, all the you know, no, knows, it, knows it all by heart, every centimetre of the, every centimetre of the place. And that was, it was just fantastic. And um, what a treat. If you, if you get the chance... Um, uh, I would say go. If you don't, don't worry about it. But it's the most, it's the most extraordinary place to visit. Well, I've got, do, do, you, know, do you know what was the first film I ever saw in a cinema, Al? Really? No. Did you know which one it was? It wasn't no, Zulu. what was it? It was, was it Zulu, Zulu Dawn? Dawn. Oh, mate, I'm so sorry. No, that's what I saw with all the kind of polyester scarlet tunics and all the rest of it and Bob Hoskins. So, 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 yes. Yeah, so that was the first film I ever saw. And then, okay, check this really? out. Yes, and I remember very, very simply. So, 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 one of the big houses in Broadchurch was was lived in by Doctor Burroughs, and really? Doctor Burroughs turned a hundred in nineteen seventy nine. And um, I really? went to yeah. And on his birthday, my mum took me down to visit him to wish him happy birthday because he was a hundred. And this was obviously in nineteen seventy nine. This was a very rare occasion. A big deal. And, 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 and he yeah. got a card from the Queen and everything. He was born the year. Of Rourke's Drift and Azawana. My God. Yeah. And then wow. there's that frustrating thing about Colour Sergeant Bourne, who was obviously interviewed in the, in the, by the BBC in the 1930s. He was still alive. He was yeah. the last survivor of Rourke's Drift. God. And he was interviewed. And in the 1960s, the BBC were having a kind of look at all their archive and they cleared it all out and they got rid of it. Binned oh, they it. got rid of him? They binned it. said of no historical importance. Significance. No! <laughs> yes, they got rid of it. But so yeah, only, every time I think about it, I kind of I feel frustrated. But I, well, but, born you know, was, born was I think only Nigel Green does him proud. Is, is my view. Yeah, but he was only twenty three. He wasn't in his forties like um, Green. Well, no, because uh, you can see a photo of him in um, in sort of nineteen oh one or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and he's uh, you know he looks um, well. He doesn't look very old. 
Yeah, <laughs> you know, he's probably yeah. forty at that, that, that point, I suppose. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, no, it's it's it's, it's incredible, isn't it? Um, uh, well, yeah. what what an amazing place to go. I mean, I, of course, yeah. I'd absolutely love to go out there. I really would. And did These, you get to Samoa as well? No, because we couldn't. We couldn't. We ran out of time. And what they've got up there is white cairns where all the dead are buried, just across the hills. Yes, yes. And, and Doug showed us these amazing photos. You know, they've got these amazing photos up at the lodge. You know, there's a central thing where the where the with the, the you know the actual last stand there was where there's lots and lots of white cans, but they're just all over this hillside in yeah. the long grass on the slope down. You know, well, and uh, and also, but apparently you get up there and you think, what an idiot, you know, what an idiot for parking his camp here and not at the top of the hill, and you know, just. Like, I've got two links for us. So, yeah. um, friend, a great friend of the show, Saul Davies, has written a book yes, on the Zulu War. Yes, I've, re- I've read it. Yeah, and, it's, and it's terrific. Um, yeah. and, and he's very good on all this. And then um, Tony Pollard, Professor Tony Pollard at Glasgow University, he has done a lot of forensic archaeology on Isandwana. Oh. So if we wanted to do a kind of sort of, you know, a kind of brief deviation from our normal thing, um, part two, we should get Tony on because he's done really, really pioneering work on all this. I was going to call, I mean, better call Saul. I was going to I was going to call Saul from... Um from Rock's Drift and say, you know, any, any, anything I need to know. But, um, but we again, it's th- you know what it's like when you're filming, you've got time to do anything. You haven't got time to do anything. You literally could do a WhatsApp message and one tweet and that's it. We hope you've enjoyed this little uh, Christmas diversion. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Zulu. Um, uh, have a very Merry Christmas. We'll yeah, see you absolutely. all very soon. All right, cheerio. cheerio.